We go through so many questions on today's episodes, and we're talking Miles Sanders news, not to mention subtle hints about our My Guys coming up. Don't miss it, and make sure to subscribe. Foot Clan, we're all kind of looking for a bright spot right now, are we not? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I got one for you. There's a hilarious new series on Apple TV Plus starring Jason Sudeikis called Ted Lasso. It's about an American football coach who heads to England to take a shot at managing one of the world's most competitive professional soccer teams. It's an age-old story. Of course. If you like a show with big laughs and a lot of heart, then this is the one you've been looking for. Watch Ted Lasso right now on the Apple TV app. Subscription required for Apple TV+. Plus. Hey, this is Mike Kosicki, tight end for the Miami Dolphins, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Neighborhood, city. I just thought you were doing a little Mr. Rogers action. Training camp. Ooh. Wednesday, August 19th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Back with you, Mike, the fantasy hitman. Right is present, accounted for. Varying degrees of facial hair. Uh, You never know these days what's going to happen. The rest of your hair is long, your face hair is short. I. That's what they call it, face hair. <laughs> your, your face hair. <laughs> it's a Teen Wolf situation. Uh, <laughs> Jason Moore also here. Nice face hair, Jay. <laughs> Thank you. I've been working on it for a while. I am just, to, I don't know if you guys know this. I am so excited for tomorrow's episode. Why is that, Jason? Tomorrow's the My Guys episode, and I am ready. Oh, man. Today would have been a good day had... Brooks accepted any of my trade offers that I assaulted him with in our dynasty league. Mm -hmm. Well, if they were as good as what you gave me, I don't blame you, Brooks. But he did not, and so I'm dealing with rejection today. We have a great show for you. We're doing some buy-sell, talking about Mark Ingram, which I think will be valuable, important, looking forward. We all watched uh, episode two of Hard Knocks. Oh, yeah. Got the juices flowing. They put the pads on for the last... Four minutes of the episode. The, the helmets. The helmets on. Yeah. Oh, man. That was fun to watch football. I think the last thing on this earth Mike wants is any sort of pads and coverings because A.J. Dillon won't be wearing those short shorts anymore. <laughs> and Mike, I mean, A.J. Dillon was. Oh, crap. Who? Someone on the Rams. Oh, dang it. Someone, Wait, somebody someone, else had quads that you approved No, no, of, no. But someone. What? Oh, Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen was rocking the short shorts, my man. They're making a comeback. And also, to all the haters out there, those L.A. Rams jerseys and helmets looked hot. They were hot. I uh, agree. Yeah, the helmets and the jerseys are great. They're great. I'm not – When you know how the Hard Knocks has their big like logo banner and it's like Los Angeles and uh-huh. they got the Chargers? And then they got that Ram. That one is still – that one's still not quite grown on me. All right. Looks a little bit – That's okay. Like some, some clip art or something. Uh, that's – but I, it, you know, the helmets are it's amazing. modern. Sure, sure. All right, you can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe, click that bell. We got a big giveaway coming Friday, mm. which will be mm. live streamed Friday afternoon, I believe six p.m. Eastern time. We are going to give away an ultimate draft kit for life. For life. Along with an Alvin Kamara signed jersey on Friday. Big giveaway. The way that you can make sure you're entered is anybody that has purchased a 2020 Ultimate Draft Kit by Friday is entered to win. So, and yes, if you got it in the past, you are entered. Yeah, that, that's by Friday. Oh, I, I understand, but we've no, still I'm been getting the questions. It. Yeah, absolutely. And so we're going to announce that 6 p.m. Eastern, live on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook. Everywhere we live stream. The community's over at jointhefoot.com. That's how you can get in on the largest fantasy football tournament. Oh. Season-long league, the Megalobowl. 
So you can check that out at jointhefoot.com. It's time for some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. All right, buy or sell. Mark Ingram, 11 total touchdowns in the upcoming 2020 season. Buy Mm. or sell 11 total touchdowns last year. In case you're curious, Mark Ingram had 15 total touchdowns in 15 games. He was a touchdown machine. Including five receiving touchdowns on only 26 receptions, which I don't know if you know this. That's good. That's, uh, that's not happening again. That's not happening again. <laughs> I'm sure that has never happened before. Correct. Um, so this is an interesting stat line because Pristine Auction has given us the option to buy or sell, and I don't know what to do. Because I have Mark Ingram statted out, and I have him right at 11. I have him at 11 touchdowns you, as well. I've got him down for nine rushing and two receiving. I'm uh, eight rushing, three receiving. Okay. But, yeah, I mean, so, Andy, you're going to have to be the one to buy or sell here. Now, now, to pull back a little bit, if we have him at 11, that is a great year. There's been a lot of talk on the Twitter sphere about the touchdown regression that will come for Mark Ingram. That is true. But if he regresses to 11, he is still a value where he's going sure. in drafts right now. If Christian McCaffrey had that same efficiency in the passing game, he would have had 22 and a half <laughs> receiving touchdowns exactly. last year. Exactly. Um, no, I'm buying. I'm buying Mark Ingram okay. with 11 total touchdowns. I'm not certain that regression will happen for Mark Ingram in the touchdown totals. Like, I mean, this is one of the best offenses in football. Lamar Jackson's touchdown efficiency was insane last season. A lot of people expecting that to go from 34, 35 touchdown, or what do you have, 34 last year? To, to go back down to 25, 26. 36 last passing? year. Passing? Yes. Woo. Okay. So I think that there's every opportunity for Mark Ingram to go double digits, rushing touchdowns again, 10, 11, 12. They're, they're talking up J.K. Dobbins. In Baltimore. Dobbins is great, but I do think that rookie year, when you get down near the goal line, the efficiency they had with Mark Ingram, I don't see why they would take the vet There's off no the reason. field in yeah. that portion of the field. I, I, He's always had a nose for the, the goal line. I, I think Mark Ingram is – I think he's got that job on lockdown, and I, I love Dobbins. He's the future there. The, the question mark for Ingram to me is just outside of touchdowns, What's the volume look like? What does the yardage total look like? Is he more of a touchdown dependent? You start him, he scores, you're happy. He doesn't score, you're not happy type of player, which depending on how you're building your roster, you might be fine with a a running back like that Yeah, at the value point. A running back like that in the second round, you're not happy about it. But but Mark Ingram, who is often the fifth, even sometimes a sixth round running back, then yeah, I'll take I'll take the chances. Forty third in routes run among running backs, second in receiving touchdowns. Oh, he's he's very good. I'd be certain that those numbers <laughs> come down in the receiving game. Well, I mean, imagine being near the goal line, and then Lamar Jackson is rolling out. What do you do? I mean, yeah. it's it's not a coincidence that you have this incredible rushing quarterback who can then. Just as they collapse to sell out to stop him, which they have to do, he throws the ball forward a foot, and Ingram takes it the rest of the way. That so I, you know, that's why I've still got him with three uh, receiving touchdowns. That play is gonna work. Yeah, and they, and again, they had a pretty decent season, guys. I don't think that they have a real reason to bring Mark Ingram off the field. They paid him as an offseason acquisition. They're gonna use him up. You know, that running back shelf life, and Ingram's just. A machine. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of pristine auction, Mark Ingram signed Ravens jersey forty four dollars yesterday. They're doing a uh, tomorrow's the last day of their fantasy week, where all of their memorabilia auctions. They have a special auction for fantasy football stars, including Mark Ingram. Bidding starts at twenty dollars, so you can actually um, that's basically stealing product away from pristine auction. Check them out, pristineauction.com. Use the code Ballers. Student news. <laughs> News and notes from around the league. The biggest news is obviously the My Guy episode tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Huge news. I'm not to say that this episode sucks, but tomorrow's is so much. No, better. no. It's it, This episode is actually great, but it does suck compared, compared yeah. to the My Guys episode. 
which has not even been recorded yet. Right. Like, if those were the only two episodes, this one is the worst. Yeah. You say, oh, they, they made me listen to that yeah. crap. What a dump. It might be the worst just because of this news. The Eagles <sighs> have listed Miles Sanders as week to week with a lower <laughs> body <laughs> injury. <laughs> that scared me a little bit. That was pretty loud. Um, the news or the alarm? Bo- both. Very loud news. Miles Sanders, week to week. This was like mere moments after yet another you're the guy, oh, Heist Deuce, train. Deuce Staley, he, like, he is treading on some, some dangerous waters here, getting people this pumped up for Miles Sanders. I posted in our Slack channel. I, I said, oh, man, I'm getting those Chan Gailey, CJ Spiller. We're going to give him the ball till he pukes vibes of – Either either this coach is now the most like Deuce Staley is will be the most beloved man in all of fantasy football if they in fact follow through and give Miles Sanders all those carries, or he gets you know the most of them and people will be not pleased. Well, the with thing Mr. is, Staley. if you go back to our fire and ice, I I was championing for the truth of what Deuce Staley was saying. I believe it wholeheartedly. I think Miles Sanders is a an absolute top pick he's a great first rounder he's going to be a great back the one way that gets derailed is his body is a week to week lower body yeah, is, his, injury? Is, is his body isn't able to sustain what they do want and plan to give him and obviously he missed a little bit of time last year and and now week to week it's it's, not, it's certainly not what you want to give you confidence that he can handle the workload no it's bad and boston scott wasn't available so Corey Clement is running with the ones. That's what we have in Philadelphia. Welcome to Philadelphia again. Excellent. Land of the Greg Wards and Corey, we're, Corey Clement. We're back. We're back, baby. It, it sucks. And it, uh, it, all the hype for Miles Sanders, it's at a level that's Christian McCaffrey-esque of you know, what he can do in this offense. And now, like Jason said, you don't get to use him as a workhorse if I he's look, hurt. I look forward down. to knowing what this is. Because you know, is is this an MCL sprain or is this a hamstring? We, there's you know right a now, lower the, body injury is all we know as of this recording. I don't like that. I want more deets. Mike Garofalo is the one that reported it first. Lower body injury. His take was quote I don't sense any great concern, but he'll miss some time as the team is making sure players stay as healthy as possible. I mean, it's a good, good philosophy for most teams. It's week to week. The great news is he has you know week to week until the season starts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, Nick Chubb is in the concussion protocol. Ooh, all right. Um, which is what all concussions lead to. Yep. We do have some time there as well. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, the clear starter right now in Miami. You as expected, could, you could get some real run with Devontae Parker early in the year, yep. even if. Things get murky later on. This was the dead last uh, offensive line last season. They are ranked dead last going into this year, but there is uh, there's some significant investment on that offensive line, so that could transform during the season. Um, Preston Williams practiced with no restrictions on Monday. That was the Dolphins' rookie wide receiver last season who showed great. He was undrafted free agent, dominated preseason, then came out and was looking like Man, this guy is for I think real. He was, in fact, the target leader. Yes, up and until that uh, point. tore his ACL. Yep. But it's nice to see him back without restrictions. He's he is definitely on my late round guys to pay attention for list. I, I know I've been higher than him on him than you two have. Does this news change things for you that he's back at camp without restrictions? I you know I think he's a talented player, and I wanted to say I'm coming around on him. I am looking at his game logs from last year with this the hype you're talking about, the targets. He didn't catch a lot of those targets. And as fantasy finishes last year, there was one that one out of nine games where he was relevant. I mean, 45, 47, 45, 42, 60, 32, 57. That's his first seven weeks. So with Gesicki, with Dev- Devontae Parker, Preston being the third target in a Miami offense, I guess I'm not in. Well, th- that's the question, though, is is he actually the third target? Because it, while his fantasy finishes weren't necessarily great during that time, and I'm, I'm not as uh, bullish for starting Preston Williams in fantasy. Where I was coming around to is the fact that we saw the shift when Preston Williams was the target guy. 
Devontae Parker got into his fantasy rocket ship after Preston Williams went down. Now, is that will that hold? Will is that Ryan Fitzpatrick has decided that this is what I really want to do with the ball? And the same for Mike Kosicki. Like his targets really went up after Preston Williams was no longer there. So to me, it's not I like Williams to play for fantasy. It's what does he do to the rest of the team? What do you think? I it it causes more concern for Devontae Parker, but for Parker, strange enough, after a guy did what he did last year, it his his ADP has stayed relatively neutral where people are still concerned about the downside of him. So I'm I four I, years of sucking will do yeah. that. Like that's I get but, it. Yeah. Uh but where he is where Parker is in ADP, I'm i I'm fine going in on that. All right, Clyde Edwards Alaire got a day off which revealed a little something about the backfield behind him. Daryl Williams yep, received the first team reps in training camp. There will be – I mean, they're not going to go out there and give Clyde Edwards-Alaire every single carry on every single, you know, down as a rookie. And so we're kind of looking and trying to figure out, is that DeAndre Washington? Is that Daryl Williams? Is that Darwin Thompson? We know the name begins with D. That's the we know that much. Right. That's that's for sure. And that's what's important. So like if you're on Wheel of Fortune, you are and the the clue is backup backup running back for Kansas City. Like D. Yes. So we got that. So you can get to the next guess. I think it's it's between Williams and between Washington. We'll see what is happening. And for uh, D W It's (laughs) it's either D it's D W. So it's Darkwing Duck. Oh, nice. Uh, but and if, for those who are like, oh, Clyde Ed- Edwards got the day off. Don't worry. I'll be reporter reporting on on CEH out of Kansas City has been absolutely glowing using him on deep routes. He is he is as advertised. He is the player that they they draft. They thought they drafted. If I had to make a guess right now, I would lean towards the who has experience in the offense side of things with Daryl Williams over DeAndre Washington. It's possible. Um, but wait, look, Daryl Williams just dying to go out there and give you eight for 13 again, like mm-hmm. he did in week four when he was the number 11 fantasy running back on eight for 13. <laughs> oh, Those the Chiefs. Two touchdowns. Um, what else do we have? I think the the, the little note here about Irv Smith, the, the Athletic is reporting that Irv Smith, tight end for the tight Minnesota, for Minnesota Vikings. Vikings. He, it's possible that they're going to use him on the outside a little bit more. Which, look, given their personnel, this makes sense. Justin Jefferson really had a ton of his success from the slot. I'm not saying that Justin Jefferson can't be an outside wide receiver. I'm just noting his real major success came when he was a, a full time slot wide receiver. If you put Irv on the outside, Big Irv out there he becomes you know at least a little bit more interesting i i want i want to buy into irv smith i just couldn't see what the path was if it's a path to more snaps if they do some of that which is a path to more routes and more targets i was gonna say valuable snaps not just snaps in general you know what you can't do on the outside block in line like you you're out there to run a route all right irv here's what we need you to do you see that db eliminate him from the run (laughs) Um, six two two forty two, Irv Smith. Oh, I, I want to buy in. Which instantly made me go look up Kelvin Benjamin to remember how big Kelvin Benjamin was. Six five two forty two. Ooh, he's a big boy. Yeah. So I think that's it by way of news, unless Brooks has something sneaky for us. You got, nah. any, you got anything? No news on that. Those trade offers. You don't. You want to send them back to me? You, you change oh, your mind. Change I your mind. Send them back. Yeah, Brooke, you, Brooks, do. do you want to report on what the oh. trade offers actually were? Oh, do, actually, do, they, do, they weren't do, bad, do. were they? No. Oh. I am just more I, well, aligned with. Here's the, a trade offer. I'll give you one. Um, I sent him Dalvin Cook and Mark Andrews. Okay. For Joe Mixon and George Kittle. Okay. That's a, that's a fair trade offer. Wait, wait, it was it was Dalvin Cook. Oh, and Mark Andrews. Dalvin Cook, Mark Andrews for okay, for Joe Mixon. Yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. that's interesting. Pick which guy you prefer. You guys yeah. gain some respect for me after after well, hearing, I, hearing yeah, that. Yeah, maybe maybe a little bit. So now we're we're like on the second basement of yeah, respect. Yeah, and, but and we're, we're, we'll I mean, get we're, there. We're moving up. You know what I mean? Like we're <laughs> well, we're going the right direction. We we'll get there. Speaking of moving up, today's sponsor. We want to thank them, Fantasy Champs. This is where you need to go for your fantasy football hardware as you get ready for the season. Look, you want to have the merch. 
You want to have the swag out there so that everyone can can start drooling and have their eyes beaming as they look at the prize that they are trying to win, which is fantasy championships. You're going after that hashtag Foot Clan title, and fantasy champs is where you need to go to get that uh, get that hardware. And right now, you can buy any trophy or belt, and you're going to get a sixty dollar championship ring for free. Those rings are hot. You just yeah, they're, they're hot. They're rings. They bling. Look, you just put it in the cart and you use the code free ring. Once again, that's if you're going to buy a trophy or a belt, why not get a free ring right now at fantasychamps.com using the code free ring? That's a that's a you get what you give situation where you can upgrade your league with a nice Don't trophy. Give up. <laughs> get the music in me, Foot Clan. Give we, it to me now. <laughs> Foot Clan, we also have a message from our friends at Nitsa. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. You could get in a crash. People could get hurt or killed. But let's take a moment and look at some surprising statistics. Almost 29 people in the United States die every day in alcohol-impaired vehicle crashes. That's one person every 50 minutes. Even though drunk driving fatalities have fallen by a third in the last three decades, drunk driving crashes still claim more than 10,000 lives each year. Drunk driving can have a big impact on your wallet, too. You can get arrested, incur huge legal expenses, can even lose your job. So what can you do to prevent drunk driving? Plan a safe ride home before you start drinking. Designate a sober driver or call a taxi. And if someone you know has been drinking, take their keys and arrange for them to get a sober ride home. We all know the consequences of driving drunk, but one thing is for sure, you're wrong if you think it's no big deal. Drive sober or get pulled over. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's just the going backup with, singer. Are you going you, with some Axl Rose over there? Sure. Shut on 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 knees. <laughs> uh, the Dude, last- I told you, man. I I got super hyped. You really did at the end of Hard Knocks. But look. It's, you forget what you miss. Well, and it's we're not the the reporting is not the same right now because of all the safety protocols we need for a training camp. And I've spent months and months cooped up in my house, and then you saw it the the light at the end of the tunnel. We finally got it, and those f- those final four minutes of that episode. What's so and funny? And I levitated off my couch. I mean, y- y- you have to be relating to the Joey Boses of the world where. 18 days of walkthroughs, you're out there, you can't, the protocols and the way that they set this up, you can't do anything. You want to hit somebody. I mean, we have more freedom to go play football than these guys do. I think it was, was it Ramsey who's like, man, you never seen a a lion warm up for this long. Right. I love that. (laughs) I thought that was hilarious. So yeah, it's getting going. If you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the submit a question button. Or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We're going to be answering some questions today uh, with a lot of fervor, as you could see from Mike's lyrical prowess. Mm. Let's jump into a voicemail. Hey, ballers, what's up? This is Cody from Los Angeles. I've been doing some mock drafts where I sometimes end up with drafting three running backs in the first three rounds, and I've been ending up with some pretty interesting wide receiver ones for my team. My question to you is, what player is your cutoff point to make your wide receiver one in this year's draft? Thanks so much. Bye. I love that question um, because there are some names that I I teeter back and forth on being a one for my team. Players like T.Y. Hilton. Would I be willing to, if I went heavy on running backs, right. go T.Y. Hilton, A.J. Green as my two wide receivers? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, for my one wide receiver. Can I use both <laughs> yes, for one spot? You'll need to. That is dancing or, with the devil. Okay, but or Cortland Sutton. Are you willing to okay. roll the dice with Cortland Sutton as okay. a starting? I, I Stephon am, Diggs. I am not with any of the people you just named there, and it's ironic. So um, he, here's a name. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. I would not be comfortable with him as my number one wide receiver, even though he, you know, he is higher ranked than say Robert Woods in my rankings, who I would be comfortable because that's a matter of if you're taking your first wide receiver, you have to be able to rely on this person. Robert Woods is all reliable. You know, the offense is good. You know, he's out there hundred percent of the snaps. There's no injury risks with anybody in that equation. Um, so to me, it's, it's those main guys. Here are the other guys I would be okay with that aren't obvious. Kenny Galladay, uh, 
DJ Moore, Adam Thielen, Robert Woods, Tyler Lockett. Those guys are where I would cut it off. I mean, the, the thing is, though, if you're starting with three running backs, you are presumably getting three bell cow running backs, high floor, high ceiling guys. So why it's looking on paper of, oh, I feel – I feel like I'm wearing foodie pajamas when I look at this wide receiver one. They don't have to be elite wide receiver ones. You've made the decision that you're going in on the running back position. Yeah, so, you've, you've made a decision that you're comfortable with less at the wide receiver position. Exactly. Positions. So, uh, look, it. I wouldn't freak out when you're looking at the names. I mean, the, the fantastic news for this year, at least in all the, you know, the drafts we are participating in, if you go with those three running backs, you somehow value has fallen to you. Robert Woods will be there. DJ Chark will be there. And I'm I'm very comfortable with both of those guys as a one. Hey, uh, Jason's whole point on the tips and tricks show yesterday was the value of wide receivers in rounds three through six. And if you – maybe you don't have that Julio Jones, but you have two players like the ones Mike mentioned – Robert Woods and DJ Chark are your two starting wide receivers after you've gone RB heavy. You'll be very happy you didn't draft any tight ends or and quarterbacks, you and you'll be very strong with your uh, multiple positions. Yeah, I mean, it, it, in those rounds, you can pair someone safe with Robert Woods with someone like uh, A.J. Brown as well. And sure. You know, just a, a giant. Pairs well. Oh, <laughs> pairs very well. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, this question comes from Facebook. Uh what is your view of drafting Ryan Fitzpatrick if he has named the starter this year? He was a top 12 quarterback seven times last year. My my view is that you don't have to draft Ryan Fitzpatrick. Sure. I. You're he, saying there are better options that you don't have to take that ride. Well, I'm just saying you could pick him up and stream him when you want to. You don't have to invest a draft pick on him. Okay, so week one, would you want to stream Isn't it him? The Pats? No, it's. Oh, it's, uh, oh wait. It might be. <laughs> uh, I think it is. Let me, uh, that's uh, how I remember it. Yes, you are, in fact, correct. At New England. Yeah, here's here's the problem with Ryan Fitzpatrick. And, and I remember talking about this because... Which is where he was the number four overall yeah, quarterback to end the year. Because he but. actually went into Foxborough and torched them, and Devontae Parker had another great game. But can he, can he move that Fitzmagic forward? I'm not... Betting on that, week one is the Pats. Week two is the Buffalo Bills. There's no reason. There's to, much better options yeah, for the I, first weeks. And if you're going to invest a late-round pick on a quarterback, give me somebody that I think um, will take a huge step forward over the course of the year because then maybe I, I oh. went and got that guy that Joe Burrow or the Matthew Stafford or the somebody that has – less of a chance of being pulled halfway through the season, which is Ryan Fitzpatrick's number one bullet point and, is uh, maybe pulled halfway through the season. And uh, check this out. I, I didn't remember how bad it was. Patriots, Bills, Jaguars. All uh, right. All right. All right. I'm I'll I'm stream them week three. Absolutely. Seahawks, Niners, Broncos. Yikes. So if he's alive in week three <laughs> after those first two weeks. Look, man. Chargers, Rams after that. Like, there's no great matchup. I here appreciate for. this person wanting to re reward yes. Ryan Fitzpatrick for what he did to end the year. Yeah. And that was your reward. <laughs> <laughs> Us bringing you up. All right. Let's, let's grab another voicemail question. What's up, ballers? Bonjour from the Indiana Cornfields. Oh, my. Uh, just giving you guys a call trying to see what you guys' opinions are. On Philip Rivers, Jason's favorite QB. What's his ceiling and what's his floor? That'd be great to know. Thanks. His ceiling was 2008 or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh, I, come on. Philip Rivers is a no ceiling player. But what is? what do you think his ceiling finish is this year? Quarterback 11? Uh, I would have said 15. Really? Yeah. Oh, I think Rivers can easily crack the top there, 10. There's too many quarterbacks out there that I am more interested in seeing what their ceiling is, like even a Tyrod Taylor or something like that. Look, I, I think Rivers can – I think his ceiling is like a QB 8, QB 9. He is, he is surrounded by talent, and he is surrounded by talent on the offensive line that will keep him upright. I realize that the offensive line is definitely better – as yes. a Colt than it was as a Charger. But if you talk about him being surrounded by talent, I think 
you you probably had more talent at, with the Chargers having Keenan Allen as as just an every down possession guy and Mike Williams down the field and half the time Hunter Henry plus I mean Austin Eckler how how much better does it get out of the backfield for someone with that skill set and now yeah you improve your your offensive line which is good you're going to need it because you're getting used to all new players you don't have that three year four year rapport with Keenan Allen um so I, you know last year he was the quarterback 15 with all those weapons and i i think he is a he's a we call him safe but well, really run what the it, foot he's a running team yeah i mean he's he's not going to be great for fantasy when he first showed up for as a colt it was like man i did not he might not have gotten a team there's no better landing spot for philip rivers so he was kind of exciting but the more i've dug into it just thinking about how Oh, oh, the the team wants to be. They they're great on defense. They're great at running the ball. They drafted Jonathan Taylor, Hap Marlon Mack. This is a team that I think is going to have Philip Rivers do what he needs to do to win. He's not going to need to do that much. I I was smirking here because yeah, like I get it. Jo they drafted Jonathan Taylor to be the running team. Who did they draft before Jonathan Taylor, Jason? Yes, they drafted Michael Pittman. They drafted a wide receiver. The highest finish for Phillip Rivers all last year on any given week was number eight. So when you look at that on a week-to-week -week basis, yes, at the end of the year, you might be able to smile and say, okay, he was kind of steady Eddie. I think he'll be very, That's what I mean. he'll be very steady. Giving you the, oh, the couple years ago Drew Brees where on a weekly basis he's 13 to 16. But if he plays every single game, then he just ends up as a top 10 I've heard guy. a stat several times, and I don't know the, the specifics of the scoring, but I believe it's just whatever ESPN standard scoring is. In Phillip Rivers' career, he's never had a 30-point game. Never had a 30-point fantasy game, which it seems – I mean, that's the craziest stat outside of Larry Fitzgerald's tackles to drops right. stat it, because he's had such a long career – and you think of him as a big play guy and never had a 30-point fantasy game. So, yeah, I, I think Phillip Rivers is maybe a streamy, you know, a matchup that looks juicy. But even still... It's not meant to be disrespectful of Phillip Rivers. I think it's better for the team to have Phillip Rivers than, Phil, than uh, yes. Jacoby Brissett. It's more like when we walked through our quarterback rankings shows, we did two two episodes, those first 20 guys... Then you could make a case for these players from 20 to 30. The Teddy Bridgewaters, the Joe Burrows, the Gardner Minshews. Every single one of those guys, you can see this pathway to elite play, but I don't see it for Phillip Rivers, I guess. So, I mean, steady, good for the Colts, probably not on my fantasy roster. This, is, this has been cathartic for me. Thank you. <laughs> I, I feel good about what's just happened. All right, uh, Andrew from Twitter wants to know, well, first he says bonjour from Canada. Oh, bonjour. Oh, bonjour. How does draft strategy change for an eight-team league? Should I grab quarterbacks and tight ends earlier as depth is rarely an issue? Um, and waivers are deep. Yeah, I, I think we, we tend to do that. Yeah, 100%. In an eight-team league, man, where – would I take Travis Kelsey and George Kittle? Because I, I think it might legitimately be like pick seven, or yeah. even even a little bit earlier. the uh, The reality is your your entire league is going to have great running backs, great wide receivers, just a great team. Yeah, but there's only a few tight ends, and and you can argue, you can say that okay, well that makes Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, it much does, more valuable as well because they they are a separator. Yeah. But the difference between why the tight ends are so much more separate is because if you look at the eighth quarterback, they're fantastic. They're going to put up tons of points. If you look at the eighth tight end, they're trash. They're going to go out there and poop the bed half of their games. So, yeah, I think getting Kelsey, Kittle, Ertz, Andrews, I would not want to leave a draft without one of those guys. And the, the top tight ends are – we've seen a much higher probability that they're going to repeat. Quarterbacks are very tough, man. They they bounce all over the place. I We, we still believe in Lamar and, and Patrick Mahomes, but you saw, I mean, what was Mahomes, the QB seven or so? I know he got hurt, but I'm saying he, he looked on fire, and then it was just 
then it was just good. Yeah. So it, uh, quarterbacks are tough. All right. Uh, well, and the thing is, is all players can get hurt to subvert the, you know, like, oh, man, they draft the quarterback high, draft the tight end high, and they could get hurt and they could ruin you drafting them that high. But, you know, that applies to running backs and wide receivers too, and you need more depth at those positions. Uh, it's a little riskier. All right, here's a question from the website. Robert Woods versus DJ Moore. Jack wants mm. to know if I – if the draft shakes out and I go running back for the first two rounds, which is the better choice for a wide receiver one? Is it Robert Woods or is it DJ Moore? For I me, it's, it's Robert Woods. Yeah, for me, it's DJ Moore. Um, I, I love both of these players. When I look at – I think they're both safe. I think they're both the clear-cut ones, and they're going to be involved and manufactured in their offense. But the upside to me is still on DJ Moore's side. He, he you know He's coming into his third year – and he could break out and and be a superstar. His athletic profile, his draft capital, what he's his production in his second year, a lot of things point to him having a true superstar ability. Whereas Robert Woods, we know what he is, which is awesome for fantasy, mm -hmm. consistent, reliable. I love getting him. But if I'm picking between those two players, I, I, I still want that upside. It's DJ Moore for me. Yeah, I like the pass attempts in Los Angeles and the fact that there aren't uh... – any other options, it feels like. But, yeah, DJ Moore has more upside, no doubt. All right, let's grab another voicemail question. Hey, ballers. Kevin from Indiana. Uh, a few years ago, I was able to start Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram every single week and make it to my league championship. was just wondering if there were any same team, same position players that you would feel comfortable starting week in and week out this year. Thanks. Same team, same position. Well, that's an easy yes, but it's not running back. Yeah, let's talk well, about running back. He wants though. running back. Let's let's talk well, about. He didn't say that. Yeah, but it's unhelpful. There's only one running back core that I would be okay with. I don't know if you guys can think of more, but to me, it's it's Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. I, I think you're okay. going to be able to play both of those guys every single week and be completely. I think both players will be you know a top twenty four back. Almost every single week. There's a chance that you could get that out of Denver. There's a chance you could get Melvin well, with Gordon. Lindsay and yeah, Gordon? with Lindsay and Gordon. There's a, there's the opportunity for that. There's not very many backfields where you could look at it and say, I mean, do you think Justin Jackson and Austin Eckler are, are that a was possibility? The, that was the one I was going to bring up of we've seen L.A. be able to sustain two running backs of value. It's, it's pretty rare that you see the starter and the backup running back both putting up Numbers now. Alvin Kamara, Latavius Murray. See, probably Latavius, not. So you're not going to yeah. be able to start every week. Yeah, and for Eckler, the reason they were able to do that is because his skill set was so different than Melvin Gordon. It'll be very interesting to see how the depth chart shakes out. There was the little news report: Justin Jackson is getting some time with the ones, simply meaning he is ahead of Joshua Kelly. Which, if you look around, other than Edwards Alaire, like. The the rookies are the backups. They no one has been able to move up the depth chart just yet. San Francisco. Oh, there you go. That's, that's it's a possible. Great one. Yeah, it, Coleman and Mostert. It's, it's definitely possible. possible. Indianapolis. Uh, well, the, in, Mac and Taylor. Unless McKinnon comes. I don't and ruins think with your number be, one offensive line. I don't think you're going to be happy with Mac and Taylor. I feel like you need one of the two backs to have a pass catching role in the offense for both. To, you know, Kareem so what if it's Taylor and Hines? Hines is not losing third downs in that on that offense. Right. How about how about uh <laughs> DeAndre Swift and carry on Johnson? Eh? eh? Was it was it B <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, nothing really man. Look in the Detroit backfield. If you just want to be a pure nihilist, nothing matters. Go ahead. Start the Lions running back. Any chance for Leonard Fournette and Chris Thompson? I'm gonna, I'm throwing some wild cards out there. I will say this. Far more than the Detroit backfield <laughs> for me. Um, last one, Devin Singletary, Zach Moss. That I, that did pop up in my head as well. If Singletary is is the uh, between the, the, 20s. the the Matt Forte and then Zach Moss is Michael Bush. The difference in our answer to what you had with Ingram and Kamara is that we are speculating on maybes, and there really aren't a lot of there's there's, o there's only one probable. Which is Chubb and Hunt. Yes, Chubb and Hunt. I, I think you could start them week in and week out. But if you do that, realize you are you are for sure capping your upside. Here's a nice follow-up from Tim in California. Jonathan Taylor at RB27 seems low. Why are you so low on him? Yeah, the, the truth is it 
you know, the 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 way the the temperature felt, the way the breeze was going. By that, I mean the information we're getting out of out of camp from their regime, from the coaches, is they we're gonna it's gonna be Marlon Mack now. At least for you know to start the season, I am sliding closer and closer to Jonathan Taylor takes that job on the on the quickness on the quick end, maybe even game two. So it Jonathan Taylor will be moving up in my ranks. Yeah, Mar- Marlon Mack is the is the reason that Jonathan Taylor is so low. I love Jonathan Taylor. I think he's outstanding, but I can't see a world where Marlon Mack doesn't have 150 carries this year. Uh, that's not much you know he had 250 last year I think they're going to involve him Uh, this is obviously a a slower process for rookies this year getting involved Um, so yeah I think I think it's going to be at some point during the second half of the year Jonathan Taylor is going to be a weekly fantasy football option but on the course of the season which we're statting especially for your going into your fantasy football drafts I just don't love taking that gamble and Naeem Hines is going to be heavily involved. He was one of the best uh, run-blocking <laughs> running backs last year on third down. He's going to be involved in the Eckler role, and Phillip Rivers loves so some, we, we have some Hines. Kinda, I feel like we've lost that. We were talking yep. about that more in the beginning of the offseason. I, like I had brought up you know, the, the target share that Phillip Rivers just gives to his running backs no matter what. And Oh, Danny Woodhead. Yeah, I mean, you historically, there's so many guys. Darren Sproles. Even Melvin Gordon, the reason he was able to be great for fantasy is because of all the receptions that he was getting. So what the, we do, we need to revisit what Naheem Hines could be in this offense. I had a tip on yesterday's show. Don't just look at the prototypical as, a, as a, an option. And they have the best offensive line in football and the most check down happy quarterback in football. And a lot of inexperience at wide receiver. You have T.Y. Sure. Hilton deals with injuries. You have Michael Pittman and Paris Campbell, both essentially rookies this year. And here you have Naeem Hines squirting out of the backfield. <laughs> 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 All right. Very important question here from Fantasy Football Clinic Who is the most guff player in the league <laughs> not named Russell Wilson? Oh, Mr. Unlimited? Um, well, you have Jared Goff. Ooh, okay, okay. But I don't think that's the spirit of the no, question. No, we're talking Guff on the field, or or at least Guff off the field, but Guff in the person. Hmm. Uh, it's really hard to look beyond Russell Wilson. <laughs> 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 uh, I think the most I, – I have the answer, unfortunately. Al Borland's not going to like it. It's Aaron Rodgers. No. Aaron Rodgers. What? He's got – you seen those guffy faces he's got on the no, field? No, that's because he don't take no guff. Yeah, and, and, his, come on. and his Mike wide here. receivers are just, they are shoveling the guff all over the field. Sometimes you're the one with the guff, and he doesn't ever take You're the one with the guff. <laughs> Standing up for your man Aaron Rodgers over here. Really? Look, we're best friends. I don't know if you've seen my pin oh, tweet. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, I, I agree. He doesn't strike me that as... That video had a lot of guff in it, too. <laughs> that video is pure Look, guff. I will... I will go through it again. Yeah. I promise you, guff free. <laughs> How about man, Jarvis Landry through hard knocks last year just made me. Oh, I love Jarvis. Oh man. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, give me some guff. Jarvis. I was in on Jarvis. All right. Yeah. Odell's got way more guff than Landry does. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like we it's are all some... working from completely different definitions <laughs> of what guff could possibly mean. Wait, this weird <laughs> ethereal word of yes. made up word yes. guff. No one can define Is, it. What coach has the most guff? Ooh, uh, the most guff at the coaching. I feel like this one. Most of them get fired. So, yeah, it's it, It's not Adam Gates. Yeah, he's not the Adam worst. Gaze? He's the worst. But I don't think he's Matt Nagy. Yeah, that's it's a Matt good Nagy. One. I think those Bill press Man. conferences last year. Oh, we really want to run the football. Yeah, no, yeah, you, you, you got it, Matt Nagy. <laughs> there you go. I well, because like the way I'm looking at it is all those. Dumb trick plays that yes. that don't work, and he's like, "What it about was, what about this time?" It was a lot of what guff on the field. Yeah. They, uh, you, you know what it. they won't see coming? <laughs> Mike, Magic trick, Mike Davis. <laughs> is this your card? Yeah, uh, is this your card? Uh, Sandrino in Switzerland has oh, a question. Bonjour. Bonjour. Wants to know why is Sammy Watkins not being drafted? <laughs> 
because he's been drafted uh, before. Yeah, we we've dealt with it so, scar so many tissue. times. Scar tissue is the reason yes. that Sammy Watkins hasn't Guff. been drafted. Um, oh man, how did he not come up with Guff? Look at his Twitter account. Look, so for Sammy Watkins, why he's not being drafted? We we know he had to take less money to stay with the team. He is kind of acknowledging he will have a uh, he will be less involved this year than he is hoping for, and he's okay with that. He Sammy, had almost a hundred targets from Pat Mahomes. That is in a great offense. He was on the these field. These are lies. And here is his fantasy finish week by week. We all remember at week one, he was the number one yeah. wide receiver. It was unbelievable. Here's the fantasy finishes from then on out. 49, 44, 57, 139, 51, 30, 40, <laughs> 68, 131, 50, 45, 67, 103. It, seem, it really seems impossible. It's impo He's on the field. He's getting targeted from Pat Mahomes in the Chiefs offense. It's how many times can you touch the stove? Right. right. Yeah. Exactly right, Mike. Learn. Your lesson. I've learned it. How many fingers have been burnt already? I mean, it's like, oh, maybe this. But. I've got two fingers left, and those are my favorites. I call them keepers. I'm not touching Sammy Watkins with them. <laughs> to be clear, to be clear to our listeners, Sammy Watkins, Watkins will score 40 to 50 fantasy points in week one. Yeah. In one of the weeks, for sure. Yeah, we're not saying it's impossible. Week one is the worst for him to do that in. He's but, back. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, I mean, we just talked yesterday. These offenses every year, there's three, four, five, six offenses that sustain two wide receivers. Why wouldn't it be Andy Reid's yes, offense? It should be Andy Reid's offense. It should it, be. It could be. Uh, but it if I'm drafting be. one, it's Michael Hardman. I'm not. I would rather take the chance that he oh plays gosh. his way into the role he should have over Watkins than drafting Watkins. Yeah, if you had to lock in McCall Hardman or Sammy Watkins into your lineup. From week one through week sixteen, you don't get to change it. It would be Hardman. It would for be me. Hardman. Yeah, I'm not touching Sammy. Yeah, that's rough. All right. Um, last question here, Instagram. How do you prioritize drafting quarterbacks in a two quarterback dynasty startup draft? So Ooh. this is a uh, a dynasty league, but you play two. You can play two. Yeah, and so, you should. So in a normal Superflex or, or 2QB, a lot of times I try to get two middle-tier guys. I don't like going after one of the great, uh, super expensive first, second rounders. I'll wait till that fourth, fifth, and then I'll double tap them. Um, mm -hmm. But in a dynasty league, quarterbacks do last a long, long time. Um, if I'm at the first or second spot, I'm – probably taking Mahomes. Uh you you're I mean, not many people out there with a ten year contract in a super flex league. Uh you know, so I, I do think you want to look at quarterbacks early. You definitely need to make sure you're looking at your tiers late and get a third starting quarterback. That's gonna be really hard to do in a league like this. I mean you you play in a, a dynasty league, you're already fighting for quarterback depth with one starter. In a two starter league Longevity has to go into the picture. So that way, if you do need to pivot from one of these other guys, you know, you spend a middle round pick or a late round pick on a short shelf life quarterback, the Phillip Rivers or the Big Ben to, to hold you over for a start here or there, you better have that other position locked up for years. And if you've never experienced a Superflex dynasty, the backups will be drafted as well. Oh, yeah. So yeah. just pay attention to that. Tom, what about Josh Rosen? Will he be drafted? No. Tom Brady is going to be great because you'll get him for another seven years and nobody <laughs> wants him. <laughs> All right. Before we close it out, I want to remind you, two more days left. Get the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Get in on the giveaway, which we have on the live stream on Friday. UDK for Life giveaway. Um, you can learn more about, I, I think this year, more than any other year, the prepared owner, the prepared fantasy player. Mm-hmm. Um, is going. It's going to make a humongous difference. We we you know we talked with um, Adam Lefko the other day about yes, yes about the fact that it's me. <laughs> we are terrible <laughs> people. Adam Lefko. That is said with so much love. Oh, we love so much. Uh, but <laughs> yours is so good, Andy. Like I, I really do. You you guys are so much better at the Lefko <laughs> than I am. And I take great pride in that because uh, anything to be like that, man. Yeah, but. We talked. He talked about the fact that 
How hard is it going to be on Vegas this year? Like one of the indicators that we've brought up as a tip on the show before is Vegas lines, you know, the over-unders. What what are they expecting yeah, out of these performances? They're sharp people. But here we have empty stadiums, no preseason games, defenses that, you know, Jason was making the point might have the advantage to start the season, rookies that don't have the reps we're expecting. Is Vegas going to be able to get a read? On what's going to take place. Did you see Robbie Gould talking about kicking? About how if when the stadiums are empty, it will change how the wind is, is reacting what? inside the stadium? No, I did not see that. Yeah. Also, don't have kickers in your fantasy football league. I was going to say, I learned about that in his ultimate kicker kit. He's doing a lot of <laughs> mathematical analysis. That will be weird for, I mean, the pressure-packed parts of football, those long third downs right when you don't have the i mean you go to the stadiums in the nfl now and it's like how many false starts have we caused over the course mm -hmm. of the year and here you are on third down you can hear everything i think that that is going to be false starts are going to be far more embarrassing this year yeah you know what i mean like it's going to be you didn't need to you could hear me <laughs> <laughs> it was him it was him <laughs> All right, that'll do it for today's show. Tomorrow, the My Guys oh, episode. Oh, it's going to be so good. I am so excited. Goodbye, so, everybody. So tune in. <laughs>for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on twitter at the ff ballers <laughs>